welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to talk once again about color grading. Now, in the last video, I showed you an example of how you could take the color grade from any given source image and apply it to one of your own. And we did that using curves adjustments and I gave you some examples in Photoshop and it had a really good response. A lot of you have said, hey, how do we do this in Lightroom or Capture One? Because we can't draw these little paint swatches. And so I'm going to show you how to do that today. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at Adorama Picks. You probably already know that editing your images isn't the last step in the process. You want to get them printed and Adorama Pix offers an excellent service delivering beautiful prints and photo books. Just upload your image files, you control the output quality and finished product on an absolutely gorgeous selection of paper types. Prints are a way to separate you as a great photographer by going the extra mile and using photo books to wow clients. You can even expand the services that you can charge for and prints always look better than images on a screen. So check out Adorama Pix and see how beautiful your images can look. Use the offer code TED15 off at checkout, and I can save you an additional 15% on your entire order. Once again, that offer code is TED15 off, and I want to thank the folks at Adorama Picks for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So in the last video, I showed you a method where we can take a source image, and we did this in Photoshop, and what I did is I sampled some color points from that source image, and then we used a curves adjustment layer, and within the curves tool, there's some sub tools that allow me to sample those paint chips and actually map them to various curves on the tool. That's great if you're in Photoshop, but we don't have that option in something like Capture One or even Lightroom. And so that's what we're going to work on here today. Now, I want to go back to our original concept. We're going to be using the Curves tool. And when you can get your head around how the Curves tool works, it an unlocks an immense amount of power. And this is just one little thing you can do to it. But we're talking about essentially color balancing. We're copying a color grade. And so in the Curves tool, if I go into Lightroom, and I want you to see this real quick, over on the right-hand side of the screen in the Development panel, if you go down to Tone Curve, we are going to basically you have this diagonal line here which represents shadow detail on the bottom and highlights on the top. Make sure if you're in Lightroom that you have this button pushed down here to unlock the ability to just select and put a point on that curve and you can make adjustments that way. We want to be able to do that. If I right click on it, I can say flatten curve, it goes back to normal. But by default, the way Photoshop works is this is not selected and you can't direct select. So we want complete freedom here. So you want to make sure that is selected. Now, most people when they grab the curves tool, you're going to see that diagonal line and you understand that the shadows are over on the left. It's the lower side and then the highlight point is over on the right and you can kind of manipulate that and what that does is that affects the brightness level essentially and the contrast of your image. Now we talked about this last time but conceptually this is what we want to get our heads around that when we view images there are three things that we're looking at. We're looking at highlights, we're looking at midtones, and we're looking at shadows. We can adjust the brightness or the darkness to each one of those regions. We can adjust the contrast and we can also adjust the hue and the color tone that's involved also and that's where the real power comes in here and this is what I want to dig into. One thing that people don't normally do is if you go back over to the curves tool here you're gonna see under channel if I select this we actually can control curves for all three channels. Now on the computer we are in an RGB color space which basically stands for red green and blue and so I can select the red channel and I can make curves adjustments just to the red channel. So I want to show you what this does if I just put a midpoint on here and I'm going to drag it up or down so if I drag it up let's put a midpoint on there let's grab the midpoint let's take it up and you're gonna see in my image that it turns very red I am increasing the brightness of the red channel now if I decrease the brightness you're going to see that red goes away and it's actually replaced with another color which is cyan and this is because it's the opposite of red in our color spectrum here so let's go back I'm gonna right click and say flatten the curve Rather than thinking of adding red or taking away red, I want you to think of each one of these channels as having a balance between two colors. This is where it gets really powerful. So they're called red, green, and blue, but you actually can manipulate six colors, not three, because there's the opposite of each color. So let's go back over here and I'll show you. So we know that red, if we add red, we get red. If we take it away, we get cyan. If we go over to the green channel, we're going to add green. It will make the image very green. The opposite of green, when we take that away, is going to be, you want to guess? It's going to be magenta. So when I bring that down, it becomes very purple. Very purple the more you bring it down. So let's uh, reset that and flatten that curve. And then finally, I'm going to go into the blue channel. And if we increase the mids, we're going to get more blue. And if we decrease, the opposite of blue is yellow. So that's how we're going to be able to manipulate the overall color look in an image. Now, I used midtones to do each one of those. You can also do them with highlights and shadows. So for instance, if I take the blue channel, and let's just deal with the shadows for a minute. If I increase the shadows, you're going to see more blue in just the shadow areas. Notice how it's affecting less of the image. Well, 
the more I pull it up, it's going to start creeping in because the line represents the total of the image. If I move the other way but keep it at the extreme, I'm going to be warming up my shadows or adding yellow to my shadows. So you can see the method to the madness here. And what you want to remember is this little formula here that each channel represents the balance between two colors. You have red and cyan, you've got green and magenta, and you have blue and yellow. And so mixing and matching, depending on whether you're working with the highlights or the shadow detail, is going to be the key to copying a color grade on an image. So what I want to do is let's go back over to the source image and I'm going to show you how quickly you can recreate this using this technique that I just described to you. So here's our source image. I want you to do something. If you're in Lightroom, I want you to hold shift and then the letter R and this is going to create a reference view and basically you can drag and drop anything from the film strip up here into the reference. So I actually want this image as the reference. This is going to be the image I'm working on and this allows me to work side by side with my original image. So when I'm over here on my active image, if I do anything like, for instance, change the exposure or jack my highlights up, whatever, it does not affect the other image. So it allows me to leave an image up as reference. So that's what we're going to do. So if you remember from the last video, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But what we did is I used the color picker to analyze the highlights and the shadows. And then we kind of went by the mids based on our intuition. And then I showed you a different way of doing that. And if you remember from that video, the blackest area or the darkest area in this image, I was going off the gentleman's pant leg over here. The brightest area was the highlight on the back of this leg or even the hand. And so we knew from actually tapping on those as color swatches that this wasn't actually a black color. This was more of a magenta. So our darks are going, or our, sorry, our shadows in the image are going to lean towards magenta. And then this is a cream color, kind of a yellow, almost into the green territory. And so that's what we're going to do for our highlights. So with that in mind, I'm going to use curves and I'm going to first start with the shadows and then I'm going to move to the highlights. And if I need any mid-tone adjustment, I'm going to do that afterwards. So let's begin. If we start over here, I'm going to, well, you can select any channel. What we want to do is we want to add magenta into the shadows because this dark point was actually magenta. That's the color sample that we pulled from that image. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the green channel because remember the opposite of green is magenta. And so what I'm going to do is take the bottom part of this slider over here, sorry, the bottom part of the curve here, and I'm just going to move the shadows over just a little bit. And so if I move up, we add green, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to add magenta. And you can already see that we're taking on the look of our source image. Maybe a little heavy, we can adjust it later and come back. So our shadows are kind of taken care of really quickly with just one little move. So how do we do the highlights? And remember, if we want to go to an orange, almost a green, it's going to be a mix of colors because we don't have orange as an option in any of those. The closest I can do is I can mix red and yellow to get orange. So let's do that. Let's go over to the red channel. I'm going to take the highlights and we want to move them to the left here. And that's going to intensify the red in the highlights. That's way too much. I'm going to bring that back. And we're going to mix some yellow into that. So I need to go to blue and we're going to subtract blue from the highlights here, move them down. And you can see that I start to get a little bit of a yellow tint to my highlights. And that actually looks really good. If we look at this white flower here that starts to lean towards that creamish yellow, if I wanted to experiment with green in there because that color actually was in there somewhere, I would do the same. I would add green to my highlights here and just pull the highlight into this over. And a little bit goes a long way. And, you know, the other thing, too, is we have increased the contrast just a little bit. And with contrast comes saturation. So one thing I might want to do is bump my saturation down just a little bit here. And since our source image is analog and film in nature, I would probably go back to my master curves here, go back to all three channels, the RGB. And I'm going to put a little shelf here on the low end, and I'm going to make it so the blacks don't go all the way to black, and you could adjust your contrast accordingly. I want to show you how to do another one from scratch, because if you're going to do this just in Lightroom without using Photoshop, we don't have access to that color picker in the same way. We don't have the ability to paint the swatches. We don't have additional tools within the curves adjustment. So I want to show you how we can do a whole new one from scratch. We're going to do the same image. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to right click on that image, and we are going to say, create virtual copy. It's going to create a second copy of this. And I want to click that and we're going to settings reset. And then for the source image, I'm going to use something different entirely. And this is a still from a movie. And if you've ever seen it, it's called Amelie. It's a beautiful movie and it's got some wonderful color grading in it. it has a really warm analog look to it. So in that last video, I used Photoshop to grab some color samples. Then I just used the brush to paint a layer so I could like get those samples and actually map them to the colors. And I know what you're thinking, Ted, hey, in Lightroom or Capture One, there is no way 
way of painting and grabbing those samples. So there is a way in Lightroom. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a little backwards and it's a little weird, but it does work. What we're looking for is we want to understand what the tint is on the shadows and the tint is on the highlights. It's hard to see. It's really, for me in particular, it's really difficult to see shadows because my eye just wants to see that. If you look at this image here uh, from our sample, like behind this door is what I'm going to sample, and that looks black to me. It's not black, I promise. So how do we get something like an eyedropper or something where can we can at least be informed to know what color everything is? Well, let me show you. If I go over to the development pane, we're going to do a little trick here. This is a secret. So if we click on the gradient adjustment thing here, uh, we are going to get all my stuff where I can make a gradient. We're not actually going to do it. But at the bottom, there's a little thing that says color. And if you've opened uh, Lightroom for the first time, you've probably seen that X'd out. If I click on that, it's going to give me a select a color, a little color picker here. I know this is super weird, but it does work. If I hold down the option key on a Mac or alt on a PC, select anywhere in there, click and drag outside, now it's going to show me a color for whatever I'm selecting on the image. So for instance, if I select this red sweater that she's wearing, look over on the color picker, see, I can see red. So I don't need to really paint with these, I just need to know what they are. And so what I'm gonna do real quick is let's look at our highlights. I'm gonna do this bright spot in this window over here. That seems to be the brightest area in the image. If I look over at the select a color menu here, you're gonna see that that's very clearly orange. Definitely moving towards yellow, depending on if I move it around slightly. So that's what we want. So our informed decision here that we're going to make is that the highlights are going to go orange. Now let's look at shadows. Let's look at that area behind the door. And guess what? It is green. If I move it around, it kind of changes a little bit, but it's definitely green. All we need to know is that the highlights need to be orange, the shadows need to be green. So I'm going to go ahead and close this color picker here. We're going to close the gradient tool because we're not actually going to draw a gradient. And before I get cooking here, one other thing I want to show you is look at these two images. This one's going to be hard to grade exactly because it's much brighter. Look at the skin tones. So on my image that I shot, uh, this is a different exposure, different lighting, and her skin here is very much brighter than the moody, dramatic lighting from Amelie. So what I'm going to do is two things. We know this image is analog so I'm just going to bring a little shelf here on my low end so it doesn't exactly go towards a pure black bring that up just a hair and I'm gonna grab my mid-tones and I'm gonna bring them down just a little bit maybe open them up a hair too I mean it's kind of difficult because I'm getting more shadows on my eyes than what you're seeing on the film still um, that's just how it's going to be. I'm just trying to match the highlights in the skin just in terms of brightness. Okay now we're ready to rock ready to roll this. So remember what are the two things we need to know? Orange highlights, green shadows. Let's start with the shadows. Let's click on the channel here. Let's go to the green channel. Oops, sorry, not red, green. And we're going to grab the low end here for the shadows. We're going to bring those up just a hair. Starting to go towards green, looking good. Now, we don't have orange as an option here, so the best we can do is mix two colors, yellow and red, right? That makes orange. So let's start with the red channel. I'm going to add a little red in there. Let's go in just a little bit, just a little. Go, a little bit goes a long way. And then let's go to the blue channel because subtracting blue from the highlights is going to give us orange. Sorry, yellow, and it's going to make orange. And I'm going to come down. I'm really looking at those skin tones now trying to match, and they're looking really good and really close. So I'm going to leave it right about there. Now, we brought that down considerably. This is looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this. And remember, the whole goal of this, I would work on it some more because this idea, this technique, is to get us like 80 to 90% of the way there, and then we're going to refine the rest. And I feel like we're at least 80, probably more like 90. You look at a lot of these colors that fell into place, like the reds down here and this flower. Uh, if you compare that with like the reds in her sweater or even this curtain back here. So take this example. Grab some images. Grab some of your own images. Find source images, try to match the color, pick things you like, and learn how to use your eyes and learn how to use these color channels. This is going to get you far down the road. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.